The Lord be with you and also with you. Good Sunday morning to you. And welcome to worship with Grace Lutheran and Providence Valley Lutheran churches. We rejoice in the opportunity today to worship together. I am intern Pastor Johanna. Pastor Kendall will be bringing the message later in the service. And we are joined today by local military service members and veterans. They will be leading prayers and doing the readings in honor of this memorial weekend. We remember with joy today all of our departed loved ones, particularly those who died while in service to our country. Our music this morning is offered by the Agape Singers, they are a non-denominational, contemporary Christian singing group comprised of students in grades 9 through 12 from high schools in the Dawson area. Now, normally, they would share their worship services in local and regional churches during, their spring, during the spring and when they are on their summer tour. But unfortunately, um, like many things, their season was cut short this year because of the pandemic. But we give thanks that some of them were able to gather and lead us in worship today. So we are so grateful for all that they give uh, to their work, music worship and grateful for their leadership today. Please note that we at Grace and Providence Valley Lutheran will continue to worship in our homes via the radio and internet uh, through the end of May. Next Sunday, we celebrate Pentecost with an ecumenical service. This is a service that will be led by the Dawson Area Ministerial. And uh, we invite you to join us at our usual time, 8.30 on the radio or 8.30 um, on the web uh, for that Pentecost service. A reminder that our church offices are, remain closed, um, and this is just to keep the number of people entering our church building to a minimum. This morning's radio broadcast is given by Dennis and Jen Holstrom, and that is in honor of their 50th wedding anniversary on May 22nd. So congratulations to them. And if Pastor Kendall were doing these announcements, I'm sure he would encourage you to snuggle up on the sofa as you are watching or listening to worship this morning and share a kiss with one another. So I think I will just echo that and encourage you to share a kiss and we will all applaud for you. Uh, 50 years is certainly something to celebrate. And again, we say congratulations and God's blessings, continued blessings upon your marriage. This morning's bulletin is sponsored by Mike and Kim Thompson in honor of Nathan Martinson's 40th birthday. So happy birthday to Nathan. We are all celebrating with you on this major milestone. And just imagine that we are all singing with you. So we now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. And we continue with a time of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you, and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. by your head in a word of prayer. Father God, we all walked into church today needing you in different ways. Some of us need strength because we are facing a big challenge. Some of us need love because we are feeling alone. Some of us need guidance because we are feeling lost. We trust that you will provide for us, whether through words or music, or in a quiet moment of reflection. Lord, Help us open our hearts and allow you to be present during the service and throughout our days. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, the 49th chapter. Thus says the Lord, 
In a time of favor, I have answered you. On a day of salvation, I have helped you. I have kept you and given you as a covenant to the people to establish the land, to apportion the desolate heritages, saying to the prisoners, come out. To those who are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed along the ways. On all the bare heights shall be their pasture. They shall not hunger or thirst, neither scorching wind nor sun shall strike them down. For he who has pity on them will lead them, and by springs of water will guide them. And I will turn all my mountains into a road, and my highways shall be raised up. Lo, these shall come from far away, and lo, these from north and from west, and these from the land of Syene. Sing for joy, O heavens, and exalt, O earth. Break forth, break forth, O mountains, into singing. For the Lord has comforted his people, and will have compassion on his suffering ones. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me, my Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child, or show no compassion for the child of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed on your see I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. A reading from 1 Peter, the 4th and 5th chapters. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Holy Gospel for this Sunday, the seventh Sunday of Easter is taken from the Gospel of John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. St. John writes, after Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, I was just thinking about the end of the school year. This coming week, our seniors, which we honored here at Grace and Providence last week, will be turning in their books 
for the final time at Dawson Boyd High School. And this school year has ended much differently than any of us expected. Our schools, our churches, and our world have been transformed overnight by the effects of this pandemic. We are missing the celebrations and gatherings that bind our community together, those things that we normally do to close the school year. But yet, even as we grieve the disruptions and the disappointments and pain that this health crisis has unleashed, we claim the gospel hope that Christ is always reforming our lives, that Christ is reforming our communities and our world, even and especially through this challenging time that we are all facing. I am tremendously grateful for the resiliency and for the faithfulness of our entire community in this season. The quick and creative work of our students, of our faculty, of our staff and parents have ensured the continuity of our educational programs and most importantly, the enduring connection of our community, even as we must be physically distant. And I am just as proud of the resiliency and the faithfulness of you, members of our churches in this area, but especially of the churches that we are privileged to serve, the churches of Grace Lutheran in Providence Valley Lutheran in Dawson. I am inspired by your faithfulness, by your continued support for all of us here in this place as we continue our mission and as we move forward in different ways. We're making a lot of mistakes along the way and we're learning some new things, but thank you for your support and for your encouragement along the way. We always are turning toward the future and we're realizing that the effects of this crisis will be significant and that the effects of this crisis will be long lasting and it will call upon our continued creativity as we contemplate life in its wake even as we continue to make very difficult decisions in these congregations in the weeks ahead we will always prioritize our mission of Christ in and among our churches to be witnesses of the gospel and to be witnesses of Jesus Christ himself. And while doing that, to uphold the health of our community and aspiring to deepen community, which is so important for us as congregation that Jesus has formed and claimed and now is reforming. So with that in mind, our leadership teams at Grace and Providence continue to meet and we continue to discuss and we continue to make decisions in the months ahead as when and how our life will continue together. But we will not lose sight of our mission and our vision here at Grace and providence. And I am amazed at how much we have learned and the things that we continue to learn together. And this really reminded me of my own school days as a child, as I was growing. growing. Most specifically, uh, learning my ABCs. I was just thinking about that recently. Learning my alphabet in kindergarten and in early elementary school and, and how at school and at home learning to write each letter carefully in lower case and in upper case and uh, doing that on broadly lined tablets made of newsprint. Some of you will remember that. The lined pages were neatly divided into rows of blue lines, the top and bottom lines solid and the middle line dotted. And we were to write the alphabet within the confines of 
these blue lines, making sure that the letters curved or that they crossed or that they slanted exactly at the right point on the dotted line. And all of this was called penmanship. And I was not good at it at all. Still am not good at it. But I get by. And I remember the daunting task of forming each letter tediously and slowly and with care. But somehow my hand did not want to do what my brain wished it would do, and my letters bore little resemblance to the row of upper and lower case letters at the top of my tablet or at the top of the chalkboard in our classroom. And it frustrated me, my slow progress in being able to write the alphabet frustrated me. And I remember sitting with my mother who had beautiful and who had exquisite handwriting. And, and so she would write my name on that blue-lined newsprint, that name that I had been called since birth, that name that I knew was my own and that was as much a part of me as, as anything. And I loved it when I would see my name handwritten by my mother. There was just something about that and that feeling of how important that name looked in her handwriting. A feeling that somehow I was more real or, or maybe more important or maybe more permanent because my name was written down beautifully and exquisitely by her. And this was um, really a great memory that I have as a young child. And I'm happy to tell you that I eventually did learn to write my own name. Not well, but I learned to write it in a way that was acceptable. And so I graduated from kindergarten and moved to first grade where I continued to work on my penmanship. And I was able to successfully, though maybe a surprise to many of you, I was able to move successfully through all of the grades in elementary school. Um, thinking about those names. Memorial Day is about names, and so I am also mindful that tomorrow our nation pauses to remember those who have given their lives in service and in duty and in honor to their country. And so we remember those who offered that ultimate sacrifice for that duty and honor and country on Memorial Day. And we read their names to honor them and to remember. And we even inscribe names to remember those who have served our country, like what was done at the Vietnam Memorial. And we also uh, inscribe names like we did of every person who perished in the terror attacks of February 26, 1993, and of September 11, 2001, who are honored in bronze around the twin memorial pools where the Twin Towers once stood in New York City. Even out here and in our cemeteries across the land, we engrave names of our loved one, ones because we do not want their names to vanish. We do not want their names to disappear from our consciousness. We do not want to get on with our lives, but especially today and all days, we want to stop and we want to call the names of those who were lost and to speak their names into our collective memory so that we will never forget them so that we will never forget their love. So whose names do you remember 
today. I know some of you served in World War II, some of you served in the Korean conflict, some of you served in Vietnam, some in Iraq and other arenas. So I wonder if you want to call the names of those you remember on this Memorial Day. Many in our churches will visit our cemeteries to remember their loved ones over the course of this weekend. So who do you remember? And who do you call out today? Now Jesus says in today's gospel to remember. In his prayer that he prays aloud to God for all of us to remember, Jesus says to God, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you have given me, I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth. So we are given the privilege to enter into this intimate moment of prayer that Jesus has with his Father in heaven. And Jesus is saying in this long prayer at the end of the Gospel of John, Jesus says about you and me that because of Jesus we know the name of God and we know the truth. And this truth makes things holy. This Truth, though, is not a long list of facts. Jesus is not begging that the people be immersed or bathed in an encyclopedia. We might be able to recognize our name or even rightly write our names, but we forget a lot in this life. We get so hung up on facts, my friends, and as it turns out, we aren't very good at remembering facts anyway. Don't know much about history. Don't know much about biology. Don't know much about a science book. Don't know much about the French I took. Do you remember that song? Sam Cooke's Wonderful World song, right? Do you remember it? Maybe you've got the the melody in your mind right now. Well, I think we could add a few verses to Cook's song. One could be, don't know much about heliocentricity. Yeah, that's right. That's the earth revolving around the sun. And when a survey was done to Americans, they thought, at least 20% of Americans thought that the sun revolves around the earth. Don't know much about the Gregorian calendar. According to that recent study, less than half, 47% of Americans don't know how long it takes the earth to revolve around the sun. I'll give you 365 guesses if you would like. Don't know much about the Mesozoic period? Only 59% of adults know that the earliest humans and dinosaurs did not live at the same time. Don't know much about the coronavirus? And there are more, of course. There are lots of facts that we, humanity, mess up all the time. There are a number of truths that we don't know. You know, we spend a lot of time in this world trying to figure out the truth, however we might define that word. And I think the classic definition that most people use for truth is fact. We spend a lot of time trying to figure out the facts of a given situation. In fact, remember the show Dragnet? And its famous line, what was that line from Dragnet? You know it, let's say it together. Just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. So we want to know the facts, 
But we often get our facts wrong, or we often forget about the facts. And that's why we need always to be careful. We need to be ever so careful. If you ever wondered what God thinks about you, if you've ever wondered what God thinks about humanity, about the world, about creation, God has spoken about these things in Jesus Christ. And Jesus spoke the truth of peace and wholeness in his actions with the stranger. We want to know the facts. So what about the facts of God? Jesus spoke a word of radical justice as he threw the money changers out of the temple. Jesus spoke the hard truth of repentance to a people trapped in bondage to those things that they could not free themselves from. Jesus showed the truth of love and his tender care for people like Lazarus, for his washing of his disciples' feet, and for the unifying call of his accomplishment from the very cross that Jesus died on. This is the truth that Jesus points to. It's not just a fact, but it's a figure, literally a figure, the figure of Jesus Christ. And while it's sad that three in four Americans can name the three stooges, but only two in five can name the three branches of the United States government, a relationship with God is not like that kind of formula. It's not that kind of fact. Christ speaks a better truth today to you and to me so that you and I, we can commit ourselves to the knowledge that peace and wholeness and repentance and love are what God in Christ desires for us and for our lives and for the world, for all people. Remember the truth that God has not forgotten about you. Do you ever remember writing something on the palm of your hand? You did it because you wanted to remember. You didn't want to forget. You wanted it to be a memorial for something really important in your life. God did it, Holy Scripture tells us, because God can't forget. God can't forget you. And God hasn't forgotten about you. In fact, Holy Scripture reminds us that God has inscribed you on the palm of God's hands. And in the palms of Jesus' hands are written all of our names, beautifully and intricately inscribed. And the names of your parents, and the names of your children, and the names of your loved ones, and the names of your friends, and the names of all of your family members. For Jesus died with us in his heart, with our names engraved on his palms, engraved by nails, indelible reminders that our names are important and they are never forgotten by God. Amen.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And our prayers of intercession this morning are offered by military service members and veterans. Let us pray. On this seventh Sunday of Easter, we gather in our homes and yet together as one. Uplifted by the promise of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Bring unity to your church, O God. As we move through this crisis, bind us together in the truth of your gospel. Make us witnesses to your wondrous love. Help us proclaim your reign to all people. Bless those who lead and serve our congregations. Renew their spirits and uphold them with your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Breathe life into our, your creation, O God. Guide your principles as we explore the mysteries of our universe. Fortify scientists who seek ways to better our planet and enrich our understanding of our world. Help all teachers who instruct, both in the classroom and online, and who encourage curiosity about your creation. Nurture us to be faithful stewards of all that you have entrusted to us. Lord, in your mercy. Make your justice known among the nations of the earth, O God. Protect those who serve in our military, both at home and abroad. Assure them of your never-failing strength. Shield the vulnerable who live in paths of violence. Redirect those who use violence and greed as weapons. Help us to remember with gratitude those who, give, who have given their lives in the hope that others might live freely. Lord, in your mercy, hear Come to the aid of all who suffer, O God. Those who are burdened with grief, overwhelmed by anxiety, and struggling without medical care. Uphold all health care workers who attend to patients. Comfort all families and friends who cannot embrace their loved ones at the time of death. We give into your care all who are in need, especially those we name here before you now. Butch Anderson, Jim Anderson, Sarah Anderson, Olivia Baldwin, Tom Beals, Todd and Arliss Buer, Ken Club, Jack Flayton, Wilton and Madeline Gustafson, Marianne Heinrich, Blanche Jordahl, Monica Kennedy, Charlotte Kruger, Stan Krugerud, John Lund, Evelyn Lundgren, Mad Brad Matson, Julie Miron, Christy Peterson Thomas, Pastor Joni Riggles, Mike Stunglin, Lauren Thone, Joanne Trader, Donna Windebeck, Bonnie Westfield, and the families of Marcella Nielsen, Robert Rojos, Ann West, and all those we name in silently in our hearts now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant your oneness to humankind so marked by isolation and division. Bring harmony to families, polarized citizens, racial groupings, and members of our legislatures. Give to each individual a wholeness that is birthed in you. Make us one as you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. With bold confidence in your love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God of our past, our present, and our future, we place all for whom we pray into your circle of love, now and forever. Amen. And now with thanksgiving, we gather our tithes and our offerings.
Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.